Hello, today. Welcome to the Laddie Esports League, the Varsity Series for League of Legends. I'm Gene Sanity, and I'm joined by Administrator and Art Pulse. And we are here with the Week 2 action for League of Legends. Uh, we're going to get right into it. We have five games scheduled today. Um, so we're going to go with our first stream game. And this is a pretty good matchup. Um, it's between the best from Guam and Chi Hu Jet Blasters. The win this is a special matchup guys because the winner they're gonna go home with uh, a bucket of chicken from Jollibee that is proven we already took that out of the funds guys w are you excited about this particular matchup I am uh, I'm excited for the bucket of chicken from Jollibee that's like really what I'm really excited for <laughs> but no I'm I'm pretty sure this match is gonna be quite spicy I want to see how people are gonna hold their own for uh between Best from Guam and Chi Hu Jet Blasters. There's been a lot of smack talk as we've seen in the Discord server. So uh, we're gonna see how Chi Hu Blast Jet Blasters actually handles all that smack talk they receive from Best from Guam. Yeah, at least one person. For sure, and definitely, <laughs> um, you know, there are other good games coming out today at 10.30, immediate following this, immediately following this match, we have the um, Scholastic League match between Simon Sanchez versus Okuru High School. We got to see Okuru yesterday, even though uh, or um, last week, even though they were issued a loss in the match, you know, a pretty tough match versus Aimless Uprising, uh, but they look to redeem themselves versus Simon Sanchez, which is the first time we're going to get to see those guys. And immediately following that guy or that match on the UOG Triton Esports Twitch, uh, we'll get to see the FD Flakers versus Triton Esports. So it'll be a doozy. Um, we, I'm just going to double check these guys in the lobby to make sure they are all set to go. But just a reminder that the Laddie Esports League is brought to you by Guam Winwood Memorial, Heavy Hitters, Monster Energy, as well as support from Goodwood and Coffee Slug. And of course, thank you to GDOE and the private schools and the University of Guam for making all of this happen. All right. Wow, it looks like they're going to be jumping right into it. Uh, Ken, are we good with that? We're good with that. We are good with that. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. You know, guys, before, as we wait for the draft, I think one of the one of the things that I'm really looking forward to um, you don't have the heart. in this particular game is the matchup between the jungle players. Um, I don't know if that is going to still come out the same, but we had a uh, Ethan Graham. Uh, he was in the jungle with Leeson last time, and we had... Uh, D D W O L C. I don't know how you pronounce that, but uh, he played Echo in his match. So you see the stats popping up on the screen right now. Um, I think Walk. the jungler that has the most impact yeah. is going to uh, uh, definitely help provide the team the momentum to win the game. Right, and then you could kind of see it like uh, in that uh, graphic that you put up with uh, Dwolk being quite the. Uh, Quite the aggressive type of jungler, getting a, a huge KDA, uh, as opposed to um, as opposed to uh, Ethan from Best from Guam. I mean, he. I mean, obviously the KDA stats don't really much, uh, matter much. It could be a difference in in the length of the match. So uh, I guess we're just gonna have to see how fast uh, this match could possibly be. Yeah, that's definitely indeed. <laughs> and. Uh... I also know Ethan or uh, Graham personally. He is a Olaf, Hecker, and Graves player. So him playing Lee Sin is probably very suboptimal in terms of just him running the game, period. So he's probably just trolling on Lee Sin. He has much better champions that he could be on, and he probably just chose to hide his pick for that game. So I don't think the stats really tell everything there is to tell there. That's very true. Um, also, here is the standings for the recreational side of the league. This is the group stage, the recreational group stage. You see Chihu Jet Blasters and Best from Guam. They are three of or two of the top three teams, uh, all undefeated. They won their week one matchups, but someone will not will no longer be undefeated after today. So, oh man, this is gonna be quite spicy. So. Um, I, I'm digging those stats, but looking into the draft right now, a lot of bans coming out. It looks like Best from Guam didn't actually have one ban. They didn't want to ban anything for their second ban. So I'm wondering, uh, you know, if they, they're really just 
they're they're not taking their opponent seriously. I mean, these are best from Guam. Oh, oh wait a second. We have a dodge? Oh. It looks like Ethan has left the lobby. Oh no. Well Oh client client bug. Yeah, League of Legends, uh, you know, a small indie company, really uh, minor client issues these days, causing computers to crash, clients to crash, you know. It's just a small indie company game, guys. We're just playing for fun, so yeah. that, that's why we're having these technical difficulties. So, right, you know, this happens, you know, guys, speaking of Best From Guam, our internet currently right now is not the Best From Guam. Guys, so if there are, uh, you know, stutter issues throughout the match, whatnot, we apologize in advance. Um, don't worry, we're recording the entire match in um, full HD frame, so we will upload that if we should have some kind of streaming issue. But you know, cross your fingers. I think it'll be okay. We're gonna watch the teams continue with the same bands. Exactly, and I'm also like thinking right now. Uh, that <laughs> uh, if there's any ISPs out there, international ISPs that want to come to Guam to start up a business, hey, this it's your time to shoot your shot. <laughs> if you have the best internet uh, in your region, make sure to make it the best internet in Guam. That's all I can say. Give us 10 upload speed, please. Actually, you know, <laughs> there is a company out there, Hyperion Servers. They are looking to place uh, different game servers on Guam. Um, and they are in talks with uh, League of Legends and Valve about um, having those companies buy their Guam-based servers. So, you know, there should Please. we can really expect a lot of uh, uh, growth in esports in general. I, I don't know about with in particular with League of Legends or, or Dota per se, right? Like with those type of games. But uh, you know, we'll see. The future is definitely bright as we see the same bands uh, continue here. And there's the yeah, just trying to kick. speed run the bands. Yeah, we saw Dwalk on his uh, highlight card that you pulled up earlier. He's a pretty good echo, seems like. So definitely it looks like they're picking that. Uh, and it looks like uh, they have uh, their. I did see in the chat that they were gonna try and do NASA's bot, but I, I don't know. I feel like they're super insane if they go NASA's bot, and if they're and they're just joking around. But it looks like it's gonna be the Renekton pick. Looks like uh, probably Renekton top, could be Renekton mid. It can it can be flex in both roles, or yeah, pretty much both lanes. It's looking like Renekton top. They're just opening their solo lanes. They're showing what they're gonna play. They're not afraid of counter picks, and they just want to get their picks that out of the way. That, that's not really a common strategy, is it? To to show the clear like solo. R R one Renekton is fine. Yeah, Renekton's a very strong uh, pick. And it's used to like bully people out, and it kind of forces certain picks. So I could see why they did it. It's it's a very carry oriented top lane, and it's a pretty contested pick in terms of competitive. So I think that's why they early picked it. However, opening up mid lane like that, like how Arcpulse was saying that Renekton could be top or mid, it's a good analysis because he is rather flexible in that sense. However. By picking Zed, you kind of open your hand. You let them know what you're going for your solo lanes, which uh, makes it easier to play around. So, you know, uh, Chihu Jet Blasters, they picked up the Ezreal because right. he can build Ice Worm Gauntlet and Death's Dance, and that'll prevent the. Well, it'll mitigate the burst damage from Renekton and Zed. Mm -hmm. uh, we do see Lilia being picked up by Gram here. Uh, and it's pretty. Yeah, pretty good Lilia player. And he plays it for his collegiate team. And, you know, that's much needed AP for his uh, team right now. The one thing that I wanted to point out is that we do have the Echo pick, right? And I know we were talking about Dwolk and him and his and him in the jungle. However, we do see that there's a Kha'Zix pick as well. So it doesn't seem like uh, we're going to see Echo in the jungle more so. It might, it'll probably be just mid. So Dwolk will actually probably be... If Dwolk is their jungler, he's going to be... Uh, on Kha'Zix this game. So we're gonna see how different that is from last week. It's gonna be interesting. Okay, we do see the support bands coming out for uh, Dust from Guam here. 
Alright, so they're locking out the enemy support player. Right, and actually, uh, the one thing that was quite interesting from Chihu Jet Blasters, if you notice, their whole, all of their bans are primarily bot lane. But they, it looks like they didn't ban for the last pick, so kind of like a little bit of a waste. I don't know if they're just trying to match up uh, what uh, Best from Guam was doing. However, we do see the Yumi pick. Super annoying support to deal with. Um, uh, unless you know the strategy on how to deal with Yumi in the bot lane, especially in the in the later half of the game, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a, an issue. However, we are seeing the hover over Blitzcrank and Morgana. I would like to say they're very good picks to so just uh, isolate uh, as much people on the team as you can, especially with the Morgana ulti and also with her snare, her follow-up snare. So, yeah, Yumi is kind of a weird pick, but yeah. It's do you not... think that they're gonna go for the? They're either gonna go on like Lilia going for her movement speed or Renekton. Or... Possibly, like I would think they would use it for the solo, solo laner. Hey, you just put it on yeah. the hyper carry. You, you mean you just slap on whoever is winning the lane? She's the most parasitic champion in the game. Whoever's carrying, you just stay on them and spam E. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> you just you just follow around the most carry heavy person, like a uh, you know proper E girl champion she is, and you just keep pumping them with HP, and eventually you'll win the game. So, I I don't like sorry, Yumi. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. One of the other keys to victory is how well Che Young will play today. He was uh, the big time player from last week. Um, played Silas last week. Ended up with 13 kills, 5 assists um, in mid. So I don't I don't know if he's going to continue in mid today or, or play ADC or what. But... Oh, he's playing mid. He's playing Zed Yeah, he's mid playing mid. Oh, yeah, okay, it's Zed so... mid today. Let's see how well he does. Also later today, you can catch UOG Triton Esports as they try to remain undefeated when they take on the FD Flakers. As you can see, the team right there, led by Thresh Chobo, who had an awesome week last week. Yeah, he had some nice highlight reel moments there. Yeah, good, good one. Oh, well. they have nice pictures, professionally they, taken. Those are great pictures. I we gotta hire that camera guy. These guys exactly. aren't even playing. <laughs> I know they're playing way later, but it would have been sick to see. Uh, it would have been sick to see all of the other teams together. I mean, hopefully by the by the by week seven or even earlier than that, we'll have pictures of every single team so that we can show it on the scoreboard. For sure. You know, and, you know um, speaking of highlights, I'm just gonna go play a quick minute thirty of some of the bigger plays from last week. Um, to kick out all the vision here. Shen waiting at base of the stand. Oh, oh. Such a Yoko with the ultimate from Mordekaiser taking away ABT, but he's gonna live and he's gonna oh three mana stop for force and there's that huge Seraphine all you wanted landing on four people. The ultimate here. This should be pretty great. It's like going just move the. Picking up soul point exactly. here, unless you saw all the mob by all the hit every single time. Oh, the mob! 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 Oh, the And it looks Where's like uh, we get also the Shen coming in. Oh. Saving his team. They're all very good. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. And of course, oh, my personal oh, favorite, oh, the God Kids, baby. Yeah. You can't the kill the God Kids. Yali Ultimate, Yali Ultimate coming out from Aurora as well. <laughs> Dude, that, that was hit unfailing wild. Wow. Yeah, one kid five player, dude, does not care about your existence. Let's go, my boy. That was a while. Literally just got ulted by every single member of the other team, or nearly every single member of the other team. So that was a wild. Yeah, he lived through each and every one of those things. So any so. takeaways from this particular game uh, that's going to come up right now? Um, anything that stands out to you? Keys to victory or lineup composition? Which team has a stronger lineup? You guys think? Mm. Hmm. Well, in terms of burst, I think Vesta and Guam definitely has like a really good. If they catch you out, you will die because with Yumi and uh, Yumi attached to like any of the carries, any of these 
pet players in particular, she could start blasting you with her ultimate. Uh, Zed can eliminate people rather quickly. Chaeyoung on Zed is also very uh, scary because he's played in a couple of custom games and he's dropped some 20s. Some 20 kill games. Uh, Lilia, Flash, Q, Ultimate, Engage. Also very scary, something to look out for. And on the side of uh, Chihu Jet Blasters, you have more of a... How do you say? Like a... I'm sorry, I just lost their comp because we're loading into the game. Oh, there it is. They have, they have a little bit of scaling from Gangplank and they have a pretty decent AoE. But it looks like they're going to be... Like top top lane's looking to scale, so they're definitely gonna play weak uh, weak side top because we're necking into gangplank. Although uh, gangplank can survive against Renekton, it's not exactly the best for him because you have to keep your distance from Renekton and respect the lane. So weak side will definitely be top. It looks like we have jungle echo and Kazix mid, so it's a really it's very odd. It's certainly not a normal. Uh, team composition that Chihu Jet Blasters is going for. Exactly, like uh, Kha'Zix mid. Uh, never actually seen Kha'Zix mid. I've seen a lot of, you know, uh, Nocturne mid. Uh, as for who, or even Graves mid, and uh, that's the one thing that I've definitely are. I'm definitely more familiar as for jungle picks in the mid lane. So seeing Kha'Zix mid is actually a first for me. I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna be. Interesting. Kha'Zix mid was used in like seasons past. The, the homeboy Alex each from Moscow 5 way back in the day he used to run the rocket roach in the mid lane maxing out W and evolving it first and uh, building Manamura but uh, Kha'Zix's current build it's kind of an end. He's got two Riju beads and a fairy charm and um, a pink ward. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure why he went for the fairy charm and the beads. I mean, um, I, I've seen some. Uh, I've heard of some strats. You know, some strats wherein you go reju uh, uh, rejuvenation beads and then fairy charm just to kind of like stay in lane. You know, but uh, I, I don't. I don't think he's gonna really build it into anything. Maybe he could build it into a Tiamat if that's one thing that he could build it into. Uh, but I really don't think he's gonna, he's just gonna farm up, I feel like he's just gonna farm up and then he's just gonna sell it, uh, and buy something else. He could have definitely gone something better like Doran's Blade or, or anything other than <laughs> that build, but it, I don't know, we'll still have to wait and see. Yeah, it doesn't give him any early game stats to compete with the Zed, so, and they're both running assassins, looks like... He is going to be taking W first, the Void Spike, so... I guess he's going to try to just sustain in lane? And, like you said, he might build a Tiamat, and I think the Fairy Charm can build into a tier if he wants to go scaling. So it looks like this whole team is looking to scale, because Ezreal is definitely going to go tier build, as we've seen every Ezreal player ever do. Gangplank is going to look to scale. Kha'Zix, I guess, with this setup is either looking to survive the lane in a very unfavorable matchup or scale uh, but i don't think that uh fairy charm double rejuvenation is uh, very cash money as they say yeah it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a rundown right and it looks like tree rex already engaging chunking out oh and getting first blood on uh morgana in the bot lane so meanwhile at top lane connect and taking a guess of trigger fable one walking up Little bit too far up. Tree Rex might pick up another kill. No, he's gonna use his heal and just barely get out. He's still hanging out in lane. Fable One also did a very interesting thing of taking a Essence Flux second here. Most people take Arcane Shift as their second spell, but because it keeps you know Ezreal's free flash on command. Uh, but he took his W instead to do some burst. Exactly. He's a lot of damage here. Yeah, he's getting heavily chunked out right now. Um, I won't be surprised if he actually loses life because Ooh. I know. Ooh. Gangplank actually out traded Renekton. Renekton took a couple of tower shots there at the top lane and just kind of ate it after Gangplank uh, corrupting potion, trial by fire, auto attacked him. 
Right. Oh, looks like Yumi Ooh. getting stuck in. Uh, Drex getting stuck by the turret, but he's actually not gonna die. Actually, yeah, uh, good, heal. Get good heal from Chi Rex to save his life. So, uh, one thing that could have probably saved also uh, Kyle Zero's life was a heal from earlier, but it looks like uh, they're gonna go in and. Is it a double? It's a double. <gasps> oh my god. Looks like it's. I don't know, man. This is gonna be really tough. Uh. For those of you who don't know, the best from Guam, all pretty much high elo players. I'd like to say like either high plat or low diamond or even mid diamond. So I'm actually not surprised to see this. Uh, rank obviously does not matter when it comes to team coordination, but you can do you do see it um, in separate lanes. I'd like to say, and yeah, that uh... is just a a great showing of uh, the dominance and the the knowledge that comes with rank. The, the mechanical the mechanical play and um, the experience of when people are at lethal definitely comes into play there and uh, Tristana is actually pretty uh, popular pick in low elo for elo boosters because they people tend to underestimate her burst potential early game we do see a gank at top or no Gram's just hanging out Picking up some free lane experience from uh, Winner's QQ. Well, meanwhile, Gangplank just happily farming under his tower. Got a little freeze going there. Good for him. Alright. Uh, Tristana going for the Serrated Dirk Penetration build. This is just a weird game overall. <laughs> so far. Yeah. Have you ever like uh, really looked into uh, the you know the reason why they 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 started doing that strat where you do the serrated dirk into like you know BF and whatever completed item you do for BF sword? I, oh, I've, early... I've seen that strat, you know. Early penetration is really nice for uh, you know you, you do basically true damage if you get enough armor pen versus like AD carries early, but I don't usually see it on Tristana. Usually on Tristana you want to go like Storm Raider or Infinity Edge. Basic, uh, your, your basic ADC build. So it's quite interesting to see a Serrated Dick early on Tristana. Especially because she had enough gold to buy a BF Sword. And she could have just ran her lead a little bit harder. It's very aggressive. And uh, I'm pretty sure Tree Rex is confident in this lane. As you mentioned earlier, the rank disparity is... Uh, something people tend to uh, flaunt, so it's just turbo smurfing and low elo, I think, is what these guys are, uh, what Best of Bob is thinking here. So, right. Oh, whatever. Gonna... We don't have to respect these guys, so. You know, and then yeah. Gangplank gets a solo kill top versus Renekton, which I think wow. is hilarious. I, I know, I, er, earlier, so, you know, he's holding his own up there, even though there is a, what? Three tier difference. Oh, but looks like Cheon getting Cheon. the ult off, but he's not going to be able to get the kill off of Kha'Zix. Going to be able to flash out and use his ult, his uh, his ultimate, uh, his camouflage in order to yeah, get out. Of that well, just it just let him uh, dodge all the damage there from uh, Zed. So he was able to survive the death mark. Gram was a little bit late to that, so oh, Gram and Dulok about to meet up in the jungle here. Dulok coming in hot. Trying to do some damage, Gram kind of ignoring the fact that he's there. He's going to be dipping out because the bot lane will be collapsing. Very smart play. Oh, but it looks like Kyle Zero made the mistake of walking up. Is he gone? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I guess that's the early lethality for you <laughs> with the serrated dick. Just doing a little bit of extra damage to uh, take him out. Yeah, but I'm really proud of this gangplank at top lane, by the way. The J J Vlado. He he's a gangplank gamer, man. Like he's honestly Wait. holding his own, so uh, I feel like he might be the hope for this team. I mean, nothing's really. There's not much happening in the mid lane. Um, like there's been some a few. Uh, I'd like to say fisticuffs. Oh, there's a stun and oh, Renekton diving and he's actually gonna go trade, but he loses out on a lot of farm because it did crash under turret, so. Yeah, that was he's, a huge he's really gonna lose. There. Yeah, he's gonna really lose out on a lot of experience and gold. Yeah, Renekton didn't take teleport this match, so... Oh, and a huge engage here for bot lane. Tristana jumping in, Yumi blasting away. But... 
will not get any results there. They did take down the tower, however. Right, and that's first brick at eight minutes, by the way. Eight minutes, so that was actually... Uh, that's actually quite uh, sad that's for the bot lane. That's a super tower. Yeah, that's a yeah. very fast tower. We do see uh, in the mid lane, David the Destroyer has picked up the tier, as we suspected earlier. Right, and then he did get the two long swords, so I guess he just did not have enough for Tiamat. And it is like what I said, I, I, I'm guessing that really is what he went for. Oh, and it looks like Wolf's gonna be ganking, but Jaehyung gonna be ulting and getting... Not gonna be able to finish the kill on David the Destroyer, but Winner's Q is gonna be slaying Wolk in return. He had Chrono Shift up, didn't he? Am I wrong? Uh, yeah, he actually had Chrono Shift up. He did not, or Chrono Break. He did have Chrono Break up, and he did not use it. Unfortunate. He actually probably did not suspect uh, Renekton to be there, or he just did not pay attention. Uh, he probably got, I, I believe he got stunned at that point. That was, that was odd. It, it's pretty safe for Echo to be there because he has Chrono Break, but he just kind of let it happen. Yeah, maybe it's just like first game jitters. You know, you just woke up, no warm up yet. And meanwhile, Tree Rex is kind of doing whatever he wants in the top lane. Exactly. This is, uh, I, I mean, Tristana and Yumi together. Also, go going for the Sanguine Blade, uh, like uh, some people have oh. mentioned. However, we have a fight in the in the jungle in the bot lane, but oh, that was it's just a quick skirmish. Yeah, it's a quick skirmish. skirmishing a little little trade. Gram stealing away the Raptors. And a little handshake from Echo. Handshake to the face, and it looks like Gram will be starting the dragon, or. Yeah, he will be starting the dragon. He's gonna be able to do that solo, unless Renek wants to come help. Meanwhile, on the mid lane, Chaeyoung taking very aggressive trades versus David the Destroyer, but David the Destroyer, he won't actually get a lot of sustain out of his, uh, his Void Spikes there. He did upgrade them first, so all three spikes healed him in that trade. That's actually pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I haven't seen uh, Kha'Zix mid in many moons. I mean, it is, uh... I don't know. I, I've not seen it. I, I'm fairly new to the game. Oh, and Chaeyoung picking up the kill on David the Destroyer with the Electrocute and the, and the EQ combo, so or E auto combo. So it's actually nutty. There's a W. Sorry, there we go. Uh, okay. Chaeyoung going in for another one. Dualock. Doesn't have auto. Ooh. Ooh, good auto Wait, attack. Yeah, it's yeah, auto and smacked away, but winners QQ. With the ignite and also just the auto, gonna be uh, gonna be taken away. Good revenge kill there. That was actually kind of close, honestly. But I do think that Renekton just had way too much more. He had a little bit more health than uh, what Echo can damage out. So it was close though. Very close. Oh, that's not something you want to do. Yeah. Um, Ozix, wait a second, but the Actually, turret. Yeah, when are you keeping up there? He autoed the turret. He did? Wow. Yeah. Oh, uh, he better. David the Destroyer should leave before Tree Rex comes in and just jumps. So, he's not the only one who can uh, multi jump. Uh, Kha'Zix, uh, Kha'Zix can multi jump, but uh, you really don't want to go up against a fed Tristana at this time. Actually, Kha'Zix right now, he since he got Void Rack, the Void Spike upgrade, he, he does not have the the wing upgrade. He cannot reset on his jumps off kills at the moment. That's true. So. That's true. I, I like this Sanguine Blade build, though, on Tristana. As long as she's only facing one opponent, she will get all those buffs. And she right. just kind of rolled up the top, broke the tower, and it looks like Grab getting caught out a little bit here by Echo, but... You know, Lilia is a balanced champion, so she's just gonna run away. That's phase, phase yeah, phase exactly. Oh, and it looks like they're gonna engage on uh, Tree Rex, but Tree Rex is, you know, with the support of his cat on his shoulder, is not gonna be able to do, or is gonna be able to live through it and just secure the kill off of that kill. Unfortunately.
Yeah, Tristana with you is super safe. You have the rocket jump, you have the final chapter, you have the healing. You have all those summoner spells. Actually, <laughs> yeah, you have, you have all the help in the world, so... Looks Up. like Gangplank failed to connect his barrels there. Tree Rex going for the all-in. We'll be able to take down David the Destroyer there with the explosive charge. Jumping in yet again, auto-attacking a minion for good measure and jumping back out. Classic Tristana gameplay. <laughs> Just fed out of her mind. <laughs> Complete tower destruction. And it's like, uh, you know, it, it's, it to me is not, it's not as classic. I've not seen a Tristana. Well, obviously I don't, I don't, I'm not in that high of an elo myself, but, uh, seeing the Sanguine Blade working, actually getting the IE already, 14 minutes, completing two items and completing boots at 14 minutes. I, I, I don't, I don't know if they can compete, honestly. Yumi's just gonna stay on Tristana throughout the entire game, and uh, he's just gonna push for turrets. He got every, he got tur tier one, all of the turret plates from tier one for from bot and top. So that's a lot of gold. <laughs> got 15 plates in the rift. Uh, I don't know if you saw that earlier, but when his QQ legit just hopped over the wall, annihilated Echo, and then walked away. <laughs> it was, it was a, there was a moment where they both just kind of looked at each other. I went, yeah, you're dead as hell. <laughs> Just tipped out. <laughs> that was real interesting. Cheyong is right inside the enemy base, as said. 20% HP. And just kind of shift or uh, control fouring them. Just laughing in their face. Looks like they're trying to make a show of it for us here. Exactly. No. Grab does have the rip turtle. If you want to actually take a look at the gold difference, look at how huge. Uh, the gold difference would be because Tristana nine to nearly 10k gold. The only person near 10k, it's it's actually disgusting. <laughs> yeah, she's just fed out of her mind. Like, look what she's allowed to get away with because of how far ahead they are. Yeah. And oh. every, every time you walk up to this Tristana, you're just giving her another kill. Like, it's insane. Yumi, Yumi on a hyper carry, everybody. This is why she is the best e-girl champ. You can be playing Animal Crossing while playing Yumi, and you would still be winning, because all you have to do is press E every now and then. Facts. Facts. I mean, I believe there's uh, somebody who's played both ADC and Yumi. At the same time, one with the oh, one yeah. with his hands, one with his feet, and so it works. Can you with your feet. Confirmed. It it works. <laughs> it was a French streamer, I believe. He played Yumi with his feet because it's just that easy. And this is what what it goes to show. Like when you don't trust anybody else but yourself, especially if you're an ADC, learn how to play with your feet. Play in bot lane. Play Yumi and play your ADC. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> buy two computers. I mean, I'd, I'd rather have me playing Yumi with my feet than like a silver support, honestly. Like, it, because I main support, I hate playing ADC or supports that don't know what they're doing. I would rather play Yumi with my feet than have a bad support. <laughs> I really would. I don't know how I would control the Q though. Like, I wonder how he did that. Did he use his foot to like drive it, like drift it into the enemy team? I, I don't know, I honestly don't know, but it looks like Young, a little bit Ooh. too feisty here, gets killed by uh, Dwok, so... Yeah. Not a very good showing by him today, huh? He's like 1 and 2, getting they're getting carried through bot right now. And uh, Gram as well, completely uh, non-interactive jungle gameplay. He is a uh, zero, 0 and 0 in a 17 minute game. Basically doing nothing for his team, but also not inting, so respectable. Exactly. Just turbo farming the jungle. He's, he's at 146 CS, which would be the, the highest if Tristana wasn't this fed, because she's at 167. Almost right. 10 CS a minute. Has 11. But it's, it's, it's the one team behind game. Game. Maybe Kono going through. No respect. Oh <laughs> Inside of their base, 1v9. 1v9 gamers, dude. Let's go. Tristana does not care at all. Exactly. Oh, and they actually get the thousand gold shutdown. 
And Drugstar being someone to latch onto because he's a parasite. Jumping on the winner's QQ, trying to get away here. Renekton is going to be popping his ultimate, trying to get in there. And Drekstar is without a host once again, trying to jump on the Cheyong, but he's all shadowed out. Ooh, Cheyong, going to be able to get out. And, uh... Yeah, it looks like no... Babel actually survived the ultimate as well. Cheyong flashed a little bit too late to get the last auto attack off before his uh, death mark proc. So it wasn't enough to, to secure the kill off of Ezreal. And she who but Jeff Lester is just hanging on here. David the Destroyer gonna be taking his R evolve second. Interesting. Or oh, he has his Q. No, he has his R. What the heck? I am so <laughs> confused. Very interesting. Right, and 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 it looks like they're just gonna probably drag it out. Honestly, uh, I feel like they can just end. Um, that's from Guam can end at any point. They could get Rift Herald, they could just push. Tristana can just kill everybody once again if she wanted to, like that. So, this is uh, what I'm actually waiting for, honestly. <laughs> I mean, Tree Rex can end this game whenever he wants. They're, they're clearly trolling. This game has been over since Tristana got 5 kills bought. It's just. It's such a gap at bot. It is a Grand Canyon gap. And there goes Renekton. Looks like uh, Renekton's gonna be going down, but you you already know Tree Rex is just gonna be going in, autoing everybody. Oh, Still the same. Get rooted. Is he gonna he get popped? Care. No, he, he doesn't care. Oh. He's fighting them in their nexus. <laughs> Drugstar, gonna be getting out once more. Oh my god. Just end the game, guys. Exactly. And it looks like Graham is just AFK. You know, he's AFK farming, not really doing anything. Uh, reporting for AFK. <laughs> doing his nails. Yeah, probably watching some anime on the side, you know. But let's see if Chaeyoung is gonna... We forgot oh. to shout out our sponsors. Did we forget to shout out our sponsors, Ken? <laughs> no, but it's always nice to shout them out again, right? Yeah, so, you know, while, while this, uh, I, I don't want to do it mid-game, but I got, I got we got yeah, to remember you know, to do that. Shout-outs to, <laughs> <We gotta remember laughs> that. <laughs> shout outs to uh, Guam Windward Memorial, uh, Monster Energy Drink, and Heavy Hitter, as well as uh, Good Wood and Coffee Slap for all their support in the Gladi Esports events, including what you're watching now, the Stomp of uh, the Varsity Series League of Legends. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the next game while you guys uh, finish off this match. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Just the fact that I heard Ken no, say, no. yo, you know what? I'm gonna set up the other game because you already know what's gonna happen here. Honestly, yeah, we, we're waiting, man. We're waiting. That's a, that's a game director go next right there. Exactly. <laughs> they have an access open. They're gonna be fighting for their life. It's it's going to be Chihu Jet Blasters uh, against Best from Guam bot lane. That's the only thing you need to see. <laughs> I, I do respect the fact that these guys are fighting tooth and nail to not end the game, though. Exactly. However, oh, David Destroyer being able to camouflage his way out of that engage from Tristana. However, a winner's QQ get, getting stuck in the middle of everybody. Getting shut down, and then there's Tree Rex just autoing, and oh, that's yeah, they, they, as well. They, they cannot be using anything on other champions, they need to put everything on Tree Rex because <laughs> Tree Rex is just walking around killing everything in sight. David the Destroyer, Flash, Leap, Void Spike. Yeah, he's isolated, so he won't be slowed for 80% there. Oh, the sleep going down. Wow. And it looks and like Lilia will be getting her first kill of the game! Looks like Grant is actually there. <laughs> wow. After this being AFK for 22 minutes, Graham has finally done something besides getting Drake and Rift yeah. Herald. He is now on the scoreboard, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations. So, uh, I was actually gonna commend Chaeyoung if uh, he actually ended, because I saw him autoing the Nexus, but he just broke in him instead. So this is uh, 
This is just a watch right now. This is hostage taking. As expected from Best from Guam. Not gonna lie. <laughs> a little bit toxic. A little bit on the toxic side, these dudes. And uh, I have a conspiracy theory going on that uh, they just want to let the stream ride because Chihu Jet Blasters is also just clearing the waves. They could let this crash over and over and over. That's true. Chihu Jet Blasters. Uh... So I think they're in on it. You know, they're just like letting the stream go as long as possible, like waste everyone's time in 2020. It's it's not very healthy and we're probably gonna yeah, we do have we have issued both teams a warning for this kind of behavior. Well, yeah. I think it's more a uh, hostage taking on uh, Best from Guam's side, so we have issued a warning for Best from Guam for this kind of behavior. It is not acceptable in the varsity sports league, so Actually we're gonna close the game. I, we're not gonna see the next one, So I'm gonna close this game I'm gonna create the next one. I'm not into the next thing. Proper. And I guess, you know, both teams, you guys are sure warning, don't do this again. Really childish. Exactly. It was, if you read the chat, it, it was rather intentional as well. Both teams kind of agreed to uh, prolong the game. I know everyone, all the viewers at home, you can't see that. Uh, you, you can't see what's going on in chat, but they did kind of like handshake on the fact that they want to leave the stream running as long as possible. So this is like unacceptable behavior in a tournament setting. So uh, shame on you guys, but thanks for the interesting build paths. And uh, I hope you guys shape up for the next game. Anyway, moving on to our next match. Who are we getting? Ooh, that was... uh. That was definitely a, sl a landslide. Uh, it would have been nice to at least yeah, see it end at least at 16 minutes. Um, I'm glad that we didn't prolong this one. So <laughs> I'm glad to be moving on to the next one. Yeah, because uh, we got other games to cast, ladies and gentlemen. So we are moving on to matchup yeah, number... The next game is the first Scholastic game of the night. It's between Simon Sanchez, uh, Sharks versus OHS. Um... So I'm just waiting for the lobby invite, and that'll start uh, pretty soon. Oh, Simon Sanchez, that's my alma mater. I would like to see them do well. I have, I don't have high hopes for Sanchez because uh, if I remember correctly, we didn't have a computer science building <laughs> or the funding for it. Uh, we got holes in our floors and ceilings, and uh, our school looks like a Call of Duty map, but hey, you know. That's where I went to high school, so... Good teachers! Shout out to Miss Abaya, my homie, teaching over there. She's definitely not watching this. For sure, for sure. And also, the one thing that we're gonna be also able to see is... Uh... OHS... Uh... We're gonna see if OHS up, uh, Autofill, is gonna be redeeming themselves from their loss from last week, so... Uh, I have I have not yet seen or have no knowledge of how Simon Sanchez plays, but I'm hoping for a good match. Yeah, we should see in a bit. I'm just waiting for them to send me the invite. Okay, move in. As long as we don't get that clown fiesta we did just now, I'm pretty happy. Because <laughs> that was a... Uh, I mean, that was exciting in the beginning. It was pretty dope. Yeah. Game. Like, honestly, that was a dope game. But, I mean, degenerate. gosh, guys, at some point, like, this ended. You know, other people, other these students, you know, these young kids are looking to play. Uh, you know, they've, they've already waited an hour. Like, come on, guys. Just be better. Be a yeah. better role model for the next generation. You know what I'm saying? 100% agree. Not a very cash money thing to do, guys. But, you know, war warning has been issued. So, hopefully, they'll be able to straighten out their behavior. And we do have the next team coming up. Now here's a quick peek at the Simon Sanchez roster. We got J JV, Mavs, and CS, Dabs, and Mark. So, this will be the first opportunity to see these guys in action all right uh are we uh, okay. let me just talk to you guys real quick 
right? So looking at those graphics, I'm definitely liking the graphics on the screen that have been shown. Uh, shout out to Simon Sanchez Sharks for competing. And they're going to be going up against OHS Autofill uh, to see how they perform. Yeah, and you know, on this side, this is the scholastic side of the league. We have seven teams and you can see UOG, FD, and Aimless Uprising all leading the pack. And this will be Simon Sanchez's debut game, their first game. Um, and OHS coming off with that loss to Amos Uprising last week. Yeah, that's right. We did. Oh, this is the second game that OHS is going to be in that, that we're casting. Yep, that's correct. Lucky them. Lucky yeah. Them. yeah, these guys are like the favorites already. However, uh, I'm going to be rooting for the underdog as usual. So Simon Sanchez with my. Uh, we got bronze and silver heroes in here. I do. There is a rank disparity, but I believe in you guys, you know? I expect the Sharks to uh, show up today and play a good game, so let's see how it goes. As we go into the band, pick and ban phase. Exactly. And also, you know, we, we did see Aimless Uprising from last week, and they performed way beyond expectation. So, uh... Who knows? Maybe Simon know. Sanchez might be another one of those teams that come out uh, showing their stuff and their talents. Yeah. I hope they like uh, Turbo Smurfing and these are all new accounts because they, they do have like matching usernames, which I think is it, it does remind me of high school a lot. Back in the day when we had clans, you know what I'm saying? Call Yo. of Duty clans. Let's go. Oh, man. That's, that's what it reminds me of. It's super cute. It, uh, back when I was your age, <laughs> I was in a clan too, guys. <laughs> what, would, what was your clan name? I, I really don't want to bring it okay, up. Okay, okay. <laughs> ours, 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 ours was OMG back in high school. I used to play with a bunch of the, the kids in high school and uh, in uh, Call of Duty days. That's what we did. Modern Warfare. <laughs> Is that I the G3 the days. days? That was the G3 days. Any any boomers in the chat that remember G3 yeah. in Micronesia Mall? And also at GPO, but everybody went to Micronesia Mall because it was a lot more accessible. You You're, already know. Shout outs to our stream moderator who put up the poll. Who's going to take this match? O OHS, OHS or Simon Sanchez? And they, uh, overwhelmingly, 86% said Okuru. But you know, this is Sanchez's first day. This is their debut game, so really good. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen exactly. Juju and Maverick before in the tournaments, but all these players from the Sanchez site are completely new. I don't know them. Uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the community, I'm sure, don't know them. So, uh, Dark Horse, uh, twenty to one odds. Let's go. <laughs> well, Hundred percent. Like uh, Paul was saying earlier, Arcos was saying earlier, Aim Aimless Uprising. They were the Dark Horse last week, and they managed to pull off that upset. So. Anything can happen. Sorry. Anything can happen. That's why League is so fun to watch. Right. So it looks like oh. we're going into picks and bans. Looks like uh, they're going to be... Looks like oh wait, uh, wait, is it? Yeah, OHS is going to be banning out uh, more so top end support at this time. Uh, and actually, on the side of Simon Sanchez, they're also banning out top lane. So they're kind of limiting top lane champ pulls at this time. Uh, I don't know what to expect from either team. We do have the Braum pick on the side of Simon Sanchez. Uh, I, I always do like to see an, uh, a heavy or fast auto attacker ADC um, in the bot lane with Braum because of the synergy. However, uh, we're just going to have to uh, see if they choose the best one, which I would think is Lucian. Lucian is much better in uh, solo lanes now. So I don't think we're going to see Lucien bottom. And Braum can be matched with any ADC if you take Halo Blades. Because Halo Blades will let you proc three of your uh, autos in like super fast along with your Q. And you could stun them by yourself as Braum. We did see that in the world stage. I forgot who ran it, but it was hilarious. And I, I was theory crafting about that prior, so... Pretty excited. I, I would like to see Simon Sanchez bust out some spicy strats like that. Um, ooh, very interesting team comp. Trundle? Yasu? No. Yasu? 
Yasuo? Franz Yasuo? Yasuo? Let's go. Yes. Yo. Let's go. We're gonna see the love from Yasuo. Turbo smurfing. Let's go. <laughs> Either they, they turbo side. smurf or they turbo in. There's no in between, yeah. honestly. There's no in between. Spicy strats only, please. <laughs> exactly. Jar it looks like uh, OHS is going for a more conventional Jarvan Shen. I'm expecting Galio or something of the sort. Oriana, maybe. Uh, I've yeah. played a couple of games against these guys. Uh, they wanted like some scrim games. We had a pickup team of friends and uh, we we ran a couple scrims against them. And they they do like their wombo combos on the OHS side. I know how they play generally. Oh yeah. But oh yeah. I don't know how Sanchez plays, so maybe they'll come up with a good team comp later down the line here. Ash being banned out. All right. Uh, the one thing I can really comment on the side of Simon Sanchez is that I really like the trundle pick. It does remind me of the Godkins from last week. So uh, it, the tank Shredder is alive. Hopefully, he but he does become a a great uh, frontliner and tank Shredder for this game specifically um, because they do have a Shannon on the on OHS side. Also J4, who is known to be quite also a good frontliner, good tank. So you're gonna definitely need the subjugation to. Uh, shred through them, I'd like to say. I don't think Driving builds as much tank stats as a conventional tank, but he's more of an off tank, so... You'll probably be getting his stats from Shen here. Uh, there's only one Godkin, so... You know, that's heresy to speak that another Trundle could be as good as Godkin's Trundle. And oh, as even. a priest of the Church of Godkins, you know, I'm gonna have to <laughs> fight you on that one. Forgive me, believer. Lord, for I have sinned. <laughs> yeah. Forgive me, Godkins, for I have sinned. This heathen has taken your name in uh, in vain in front of me. I have punished him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for divine retribution. But it looks like... <laughs> it's it looks like I I'm surprised. The one thing I'm surprised about on the side of OHS is they banned out Yone. Um, I don't... I typically don't like seeing Yone top. It's, it's not... Yasuo top also not as much. I feel like there's better top laners, especially if you're gonna yeah, you go up against Shen. Yasuo top. You can run Yasuo top. I, they, the brothers combo is actually pretty funny. Yone and uh, Yasuo together. So yeah. uh, I thought I, if that came out, that would have been really nice to watch. Because then you would have Braum ult, Yone ult for the knockup to enable Yasuo to ult. And at the very least, we get some really funny team fights where just double knockups go off. And you see a huge Yasuo last breath. So I'm kind of disappointed that they banned it away, but we'll see what happens here as the Silas is picked up. I think that's Silas mid Yasuo top, unless it's. Unless yeah. it's Yasuo ADC, you know? <laughs> it, it could be Yasuo ADC. I am not sure what is going through these players. Nope, it's going to be Tristana. Tristana Braum, pretty good, because uh, Tristana gets her rapid fire, her Q. And we'll be able to hold people down. She has a lot of mobility. So her rocket jump enables Braum to also get to the front with her. Uh, with Braum's W and uh, E, it'll mitigate a lot of the damage that she takes upon impact. So, be quite interesting. Yeah. Looks like uh, they aren't going to pick up the Oriana, which is a little disappointing because I wanted to see the wombo combo of Jarvan and Ori. But yeah. Syndra, also a very good control mage. They have a very classic team lineup here with Jarvan Shen. Con, Syndra, Caitlyn. Very safe team-oriented picks. Lots of AoE, lots of protection for the Caitlyn. And it's definitely a lot of... It's a different kind of ball on the other side. It's not Oriana yeah. ball. You get a significant amount of other balls from Syndra instead. So, uh, as we are loading out... Uh, Ken, any, anything you want to put up on the screen for us while we're waiting? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Just, you know, one more shout-out to the sponsors. Guam Windward Memorial, Heavy Hitters, and Monster Energy. Without them, uh, the Laddie Esports League wouldn't be possible. We wouldn't be able to have these tournaments for the players. Uh, also, shout outs to Goodwood Guam, as well as Coffee Sled. And of course, University of Guam and GDOE for helping assist with the registration for the school teams. And speaking of UOG, 
you will be able to find this good looking lineup playing in approximately 30 minutes if the game doesn't get dragged out any longer uh, on the UOG Training Sports channel. Uh, definitely check that out. And yeah, so we're just waiting. What, what, what is, uh, who has the better lineup right now? What do you guys think for this current game? <laughs> I'm going to have to say that OHS definitely has the better lineup. But I agree. I agree. Uh, Santos has the spicier lineup. You know, that's what we look for in these games is the amount of entertainment value. That's true. <laughs> so that's true. Speaking of let's entertainment go. value, I'm going to take mm -hmm. a recap of the big highlights from last year. Guys, if there were highlights from this game or uh, last week, if there were highlights to check out all the vision yeah, here, sure. Shen waiting at base with his static. Oh, Yoko with the ultimate from Mordekaiser taking away AZT, but you're gonna yeah, live and you're gonna all oh, love to see the uh, highlights that you guys. And there's a huge surfing also, you I believe you can get some people. free giveaways uh, if you want to select them. Are this one of the favorite free. highlights of that week. Oh, and it looks like OHS will be. Picking up soul point here, unless you've got something to say about it. Oh, the flashing! Oh, 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 the Yo, the smite skill! Let's go! And it looks like uh, we get also the Shen coming in. Oh. They're all very used to playing tournament. <laughs> so, oh, the punk is getting a little bit greedy oh. here. What's yeah. <laughs> the Shen ultimate? Exactly. That's the Galio so ultimate. Galio ultimate coming out really for that Aurora as well. Tiffany right. has right. gonna hit right. Sivir. That's huge! Wow. Oh, guys. Oh, like it's Put in some highlights. Put it in the Discord. We love it. Yeah. You get free stuff. It gets. It goes on Instagram. I'm sure we'll give you credit for the clip. So, you know, you get that good Instagram clout. Yeah. Get a little that shout IG out. Clout, you know, man. Leave your handle. Leave your handle there for a lot of esports, you know. And they'll help you out. Yeah, Ponkins. Definitely my favorite clip. Looks like he has not he's not joining us today in the chat, but he doesn't talk, so you know. <laughs> he is the man of few words, and that's the only thing. That's the only thing you need to know. He plays the game very well. Also, this you know the UOG well. game is gonna be pretty good. I think it's UOG for versus F D Flakers, which is a like a composition of players from Father Duenas as well as Harvest Christian Academy. So I'm actually excited to see them play. I think they actually got a pretty solid squad, but um, you know, you're gonna have to tune into the Triton Esports channel after this match to catch that. Yeah. We're also gonna be there, right, Arc Pulse? Yep, you can catch us there on the UOG Triton Esports channel. As we are going to be streaming later, the UOG Triton Esports versus uh who again? <laughs> Uh, versus uh, FT Flakers. FT there players. we go. Sorry about that. We got a. <laughs> it's a long day. <laughs> uh, you know that first you know, game like fried our brains, man. Like it did. It did. I, I, I'm technically mind blown at this point. <laughs> so at least we've reached the loading screen. Uh, looks like we're gonna be heading in. And you know what? It it is either gonna be. Si I know I've seen to Silas top. Silas is much more of a top laner. Uh, a common top laner that I've seen as opposed to Yasuo, but they it's interchangeable. It's definitely interchangeable. You can see them both uh, in either lane. Uh, Silas is mid and Yasuo is top, in my yeah. opinion. So we'll see who wins the bet here. Uh, anything can happen in uh, bronze silver, so... <laughs> but optimally, you would put Silas in the short lane, so... We'll, we'll see what happens here. True, true. So those have some nice alts to take away from the enemy team, though. They got Jarvan ult, Shen ult, Syndra ult, Rakan ult. All really nice on Silas as a melee character, so... Other than, like, Kait Caitlyn's will be the only one that he doesn't really want unless he steals it mid-fight to snipe a kill. Right, that would be honestly really spicy to see. Uh, stealing away the Caitlyn ult to get that last kill, the ace. That would yeah, be steal. something. That would be an insane highlight, honestly. However, steal I don't Caitlyn think Caitlyn ult to kill Caitlyn. That would be yeah. the play. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, I I honestly agree with you there. There's no. There's much more si better and significant ults for him to steal, uh, especially in terms of initiating a team fight. So yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, Caitlyn is not a priority for for stealing ultis at this time. Uh, you'd rather go for everybody else. Uh, either do Rakan for engage, also uh, Jarvan for engage, and then you have the 
the protective value of Shen's ultimate as well. So, if he is laning in the mid lane, though, he's going to be picking up Syndra's ult most of the time. Uh, if he is laning top, then he'll be getting Shen's ult, able to match him, because he also took teleport. Braum took aftershock, which is really weird for Braum players. They usually go guardian. Guardian, but... right? Maybe with Tristana, you have more all-ins with your uh, stand behind me and the uh, rocket jump combination. We'll have to see as the game is underway. Just straighten out my scoreboard here. Please invade. Please invade. Please invade. Oh, oh it invade. looks like... Please invade. Like oh, I love invades. Let's go. OHS. Oh, OHS. <laughs> Juju. We're gonna see JV here. Obviously, no CC at level 1. So, they're gonna just dip out. No skills have been leveled other than Shen Q and Syndra Q. Okay. Right, and it looks like there's nothing, there's not much gonna be going on. Both junglers just dropping their wards. They're gonna, and actually, Simon Sanchez is not gonna be recalling to do the, uh, the recall. Uh, I don't know if it's a, it's the jungler strat where you switch to red trinket right away. Ward um, trick. Yeah. So that's the that's definitely something that uh, I guess he's just not gonna be doing. It. Also, he's gonna be starting on the top side. So quite interesting uh, to see uh, to him bot. starting up. Yeah, top to bot. Interesting. So he, he again, I guess he's gonna play weak side top. For Yasuo, which is, I mean, Tristana Brahm is a very strong lane early, so maybe his plan is to three camp clear and then gank bot at level three with the pillar to stop Rakan and uh, Caitlyn from running away, and then Brahm and Tristana can double jump on top of them. Not too sure, but we'll have to see. Maybe he's got the strats. Hope Sanchez took some time to strategize here, because they are the underdog team. And, uh, what do you call it? OHS has been practicing a lot against a lot of the local teams here, so hopefully they do well as well. Yeah. Honestly, anyone could win this game, I'd be pretty happy with the result, because these guys have been practicing. I I've seen Maverick and Juju in a bunch of games lately, so... I agree here. Uh, what do you guys, what do you think about the, uh, Yasuo versus Shen matchup? Um, I don't play a lot of top lane. I only play gangplank top. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, gang. I only play gangplank or Scion top. So <laughs> when I see a matchup like that, I just assume that uh, early game Shen will take it. If, if Shen lands a taunt and uh, turns on his uh, spirits refuge, I'm pretty sure he beats the crap out of Yasuo. But right, if you also oh, get like a gank in the mid lane though, and it looks like a um, Max Zen. That's oh, a kill. Max Zen is oh, he canceled his auto. Okay, Juju canceled his last auto there, but uh, the ignite from uh, Tenoso able to pick up the kill there. Uh, yeah, level three gank, uh, buff buff to gank for Juju, and JV a little bit late, but did come to the mid lane to absorb the experience there, going back up to top side. Looks like they're gonna handshake Scuttle Crabs here. As Juju goes towards the bottom, Scuttle, and JV will go for the top Scuttle. Yeah, that was a pretty fast gank there, uh, level 3. So that was yeah. blue, gromp, red, straight to mid. Trying to enable his Syndra to get ahead and put the Silas a little bit behind. He's going to be a lot less safe without Flash as well. It looks like Shioko is looking for a trade here on Yasuo. No, he's not, I guess. Just ran away. Yeah, I was actually expecting him to engage. Um, he was in position. He was quite. He was literally face to face, just about to give him that little, uh, you know, that little kiss goodnight. But uh, it looks like he's just gonna walk away. Yeah, I'm really sad that Brom has three stacks on his uh, support item right now. It's really stressing me out. Please hit a minion, Brom. I know. I hit honestly. A Use your charges, bro. Support main tears! Support main <laughs> tears! Get the oh, minion! Oh no! You're not getting gold value, my guy! <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it looks Why like Shioko so and uh, Shioko and Mark at the top lane just doing a little bit tit for tat. 
you know. But it looks like it might be a gank. Looks like J4 is up there. Juju ready to gank, but uh, that ward yep. will probably spot him out. Yeah, Mark did see him. And let's see the level of object permanence that Mark has. Okay, he does know that Jarvan is here. And it looks like he'll be hugging his tower. Let's go. Oh, okay, so... Oh, what gank? Okay. Uh, the mid lane, Trundle but... Mid lane. Trundle in the mid lane, getting the gank off, but Tenoso actually flashing out uh, to save his life. The pillar actually kind of cucked him there a little bit, so... That was, a uh, Ooh. That was kind of dangerous. However, he did get out of it alive. Yeah, I mean... Flash down, though. Which is fine for a gank. Oh, Braum, three stacks again. Not gonna auto attack the minion. Support lane tears. Oh. Why you do this to me, Braum? You're maxing and, 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 and then oh, also in the top lane, we have Juju ganking Mark, but Mark is gonna be flashing out. Wow, dude, Every... Juju has been on the map. Yeah, he, he's, he's a hyper aggressive driving player. He he had the most kills on his team when I scrimmed him. Right. Still lost to us though, just saying. <laughs> um, uh, meanwhile, I just want to mention that Braum is maxing his Unbreakable first. That's not uh, very typical from Braum players. Usually you max Winter's Bite, but... Interesting. And mid lane is maxing Kingslayer. So Silas, nowadays, maxes Chainlash. This guy is maxing his Kingslayer. And against the range matchup, I don't know oh. how is. Oh, Juju with the regank. Mark might be able to slide out here. No swag flag from Juju. Respectable, honestly, you know. Got back honestly, to back. I, I actually thought that uh, it might have been diveable, but uh, because uh, she, he did have the Shen ultimate uh, available, but uh, maybe it wasn't enough. It wasn't. An, maybe it was. They just weren't comfortable. They weren't comfortable with that with that dive. Uh, Would have been spicy to see, but it's all good. Yeah, I mean, they're playing it safe. I, I think they're sticking to fundamentals. A lot like the UOG team, uh, OHS tends to play very methodically and uh, tries not to make mistakes. I agree. Which I respect. Speaking of the UOG team, you get to see Daniel Thresho Lee in action right immediately after this game. Check that out. Great player. Yeah, really good player. Star player of the UOG team. For sure. This sure. huge uh, thicker. What was that outplay? Uh, exactly last from last from last week. That was. I'm surprised that wasn't a highlight. That would have been sick to see. Yeah, you know, no one clipped it, and that's your job out there, fans who are watching. You, you random citizens. You know, you guys gotta clip some stuff for us. Tiffany, Tiffany over here. Tiff Panini. She always says she's a Thresh Chobo fan. Never puts in Thresh Chobo clips. Feels just bad, man. Just saying, are you a real fan or are you a fake fan? You know, if you're a true Thresh Chobo stand, where are your clips at? You know? Exactly. And it looks like they're gonna be there's gonna be a little bit of a scuttle a, a fight in uh no? Okay, I thought they were gonna actually do some a little bit of fighting in in the river. However, he's uh, each other out. And uh Tenoso was there for the jungler. You know, you gotta love a mid laner that rotates for the jungle crabs. The scuttle crabs. Although the scuttle crab was on the top side, like immediate rotation Jarvan. Ready to help him out. Takes Pryo, has no mana, but you know, was there with the W and auto attacks. That's the homie. It's the mid lane you want. You know the one thing that make like we were saying, you know, how methodical they are. With, uh, on the side of uh, OHS is just that uh, the one thing that sets them uh, differently from MyoG is, you know, the dragon is still up. So oh, in the bot lane, Juju sneaking up through the alcove here. He's standing in position, gonna be taking the flag and dragon oh, on oh. We'll be stopping the rocket jump. The charge comes out a little bit too late and they won't be able to pick anything up. Wow, that's Wait, but, but then he could have... He could have bolted. That's so su that's so surprising for me. Like I I don't know why uh, Juju didn't go for the cataclysm because Rakan actually like what you said knocked him out of the rocket jump. I don't understand uh, that play. You know, it, it was Dude. probably a little miscommunication there. Not gonna lie, because it takes a lot to notice these things. And you know, I, I'm not gonna toot my own horn, but I am I'm perceptive of these things because I play this game a lot. I I played this game for like what almost 10 years now so you know minute details like that like watching the Tristana animation not everyone can see that so I don't know how many of the viewers were able to pick up on the fact oh. that 
he was knocked him out of Tenoso. it. Meanwhile, get Tenoso. Tenoso Almost actual Silas, but Silas got off. Right, and it looks like the uh, looks like Tenoso is in a bad spot. Definitely, bad. definitely. Uh, everybody on Simon Sanchez is on him. But uh, oh no, not I! No. I will survive. No matter how many teammates you send up, yes, swear I will not die. Run, oh Tenoso! God, Run! Tenoso, what are you doing? <laughs> Yo, he stalled out forever and a day though. <laughs> Gave Silas enough time to back, buy his items, teleport to mid, and clear it. But I, I respect the amount of stall. Like, Botlane got to you know, clear out for free here. Uh, Alright. That, that was very spicy indeed. He kind of went too hard. The Kingslayer yeah. Max staying off there because he was able to get a, right enough lifesteal to live. <laughs> With I like agree. 20 HP. Respect. And, and, the, and then the, also the one thing that I noticed too is just that, uh, you know, he, like, Tenoso got very close to killing both uh, Silas and uh, Trundle. So, really played it well. Uh, good stall, like you said. So, very good on the side of, of OHS. They do have an objective. They do have Dragon up uh, against the other team, but it looks like... Simon Sanchez is going to be going for the Rift Herald, and they have no vision. OHS has no vision of this happening. Well, they're ticking in the middle of the river, so Syndra walking up will see this here. Almost steals it. Oh, oh the knockup combo! Mark flashing in, going to be picking up that kill onto Syndra. I like what I see. I like, I like it. what I see. He reacted off of uh, the abscond and abduct from uh, Silas there. His E actually knocks up temporarily, so that's where Yasuo found his last breath. They left the top scuttle up though, that's kind of grief. Like, Simon Sanchez, a 326 gold in the river, he just left it up. You know, your school needs funding, that might help. That's true. Even though your school is being rebuilt, you can't be that lax about this. Yeah. Oh. My alma mater, man. That school needs help. Please, rebuild Sanchez for the homies. Right, and it looks like uh, they're down to their final turret plate uh, in the mid lane. So if uh, if JV from Simon Sanchez comes for a gank against Sinoso, uh and I, I would like to say that Mavven is quite uh, stronger in terms of level, but he, I think he should go in back if he has any gold to spend at this time. He only has 950 right now, so he can't buy, he would only be able to buy his Kindle gem for his protobelt. Or, I wonder if he's going the GLP mode. Here comes Jarvan in the bot lane, Juju ganking yet again, Trisana getting caught out here. Gonna die instantly, Braum held that ult for way too long. And it's gonna cost him, oh yep. Oh, oh and cool. Sniperino nope. from Tamerlo. Yeah, from downtown, gonna be taking out the Braum. The Flash of Faith came out, but... You know, strong faith, low resolve. Not enough to survive that one. And I'm really liking that, you know, I really like this match because one, it's, it is, uh, it's quite even. Uh, everything's going back and forth. The one thing I really also would like to see is, uh, you know, Shioko kind of using his ultimate. I mean, there was no real purpose to use it in the bot lane, but I, I have not yet seen him use his, uh, is United we stand, I believe? Or you know, stand, stand United. United. Stand, stand for, United. For combo purposes, right? Like driving and engages? Exactly, exactly. So, And he does have the TP, so even if he did go for um, the stand United, like he still has TP to go back to lane um, in order for him to not miss any waves or reduce that, uh, yeah. that amount the, of... Uh, the gold loss. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it would make sense, but I feel like... Yeah, they're just playing so safe. I feel like OHS could just mechanically outplay, but they're just afraid to do so. And Sammy Sanchez so actually, they, they showed up today and they're really playing the game because they're not letting go of too many kills. Like, they, there's a pretty big rank disparity. These are silver and bronze players against platinum gold players, so the rank disparity is definitely there. But they're just not afraid. They're playing really aggressive champions. And, Although bot lane hasn't been playing as aggressively as I thought they would as Tristan and Braum. It's pretty resident sleeper down there. 
Uh, if that was uh, my boy Suda and I, we, we would be jumping into every fight, you know, against my personal will and decision. Suda would be jumping in as Tristana, so it is odd to see a very um, passive Tristana player. Because usually they're absolute psychopaths, they just froth at the mouth every time they see a potential kill. Yep, Proto Belt. <laughs> Proto Belt buy instead of GLP. Um, not current meta, but I respect it. I, I would like to see what he does with it. It was right. part of the old build, so... He, he's he's playing uh like three patches ago, Silas. But right now, World Silas is the GLP build. And it looks like uh, they're going to be eyeballing the Drake right now. Um, as a reminder, you know, uh, San United is available, but it looks like JV going to get chunked out by Syndra Ultimate. Uh, he may need to, you know, auto a few things so that he can get that life steal. And he's actually going to grief oh, right away. The TP coming in from Mark. Ooh. Oh, it's a clown PS of a fight. Everything's yeah. going off at one time. I two isolated skirmishes. Two isolated skirmishes. Juju is in the pit, extremely low. Mark will be able to take him down. Looks like Simon Sanchez will come out on top for that fight. That was just so sloppy. It was honestly, <laughs> honestly, I was, was I, I was in shock. I did not know what to expect from Simon Sanchez, but Simon Sanchez coming out on top. And I guess the Drake. They gotta be turbo smurfing on these bronze accounts, man, because they played that uh they played that better than that uh OHS and OHS has been on the map for quite some time now. Um great teleport there by Mark right in time to uh, capitalize on all the chaos that was going on and was able to take down Juju in the dragon pit. Right, I don't know if- I honestly don't know if the play was to go for the Trundle who was severely weakened by, uh, Syndra ulti, but the thing is, like, you know, uh, they- they were trapped! Everybody was trapped in the- in the- in the Cataclysm. Not yeah, the, both- both, uh, The terrain OHS, screwed everything up. Both OHS and Simon Sanchez were trapped in Cataclysm and they couldn't do anything about it, so... <laughs> it was I mean, fun. I'm Jarvan, I'm helping, right? Classic meme. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> However, now in the favor, uh, now looking a little bit in the in the favor of Simon Sanchez, but you know, actually OHS still has a gold lead, a very a very small gold lead, 500 gold lead because of and also objective lead. Uh, we're just gonna have to wait and see what else is gonna happen. It looks like they're eyeballing the Rift Herald. Um, everybody is technically where they're supposed to be. But in the top lane, Shioko gonna be going down to Mark! That was actually some fantastic Yo. play. That was... This is not Trashuo. This yeah, is not This Trashuo. is Ron's Yasuo carry right here. This is the kind of Yasuo you don't see every day. Oh I like it. God. I like it. I didn't expect it, but I like it. Zero points in Windwall, by the way. If you never point. throw Windwall, you can never miss your Windwall. You can never mess it up if you never have it. 5,000 IQ. Yeah. What the hell is that? that? I have never seen a Yasuo just not take a single point in Windwall. He has five points in Sweeping Blade and Steel Tempest. This is so weird. <laughs> oh well, you God. know, when... when like what we used to say, top is an island, right? And you know, your only opponent is technically gonna be Shen, so what do you need Windwall for, right? <laughs> for Syndra Ultimate and Caitlyn existing? I don't know. Like, I guess uh, I'm just yeah, but who's game. ever gonna come up there, right? <laughs> but he has still he's gonna be at the fight. I honestly it's don't know weird. why he has not taken Windwall. I really don't know. <laughs> it's such a massive grief, it's insane. Oh, Chiyoko actually taking a lot more a lot more damage. This is gonna go down. Mark can actually go in, slide, slippery slide, and get the oh, gets ultimate the knock up. Doesn't go no. in on it. Flashed out for the safety. Cataclysm has been taken by Silas here. Actually, he and did not have his ultimate, so I'm I'm not surprised why he didn't go for the last breath. So, but Mark. He would have lost both and drove all over that. 
Oh, looks like a little, little fight in the river here. Ma oh, Mavs then getting caught out and deleted by Syndra. There's the wind wall, randomly there. thrown. Not okay. I can see why he didn't get wind wall. Um, he's yeah, gonna be going down. Good. Glacial Fisher coming out to slow the team from coming in. Unbreakable stopping the ace in the hole. Good ultimate there by Tristana pushing everybody back. But here comes Syndra. Gonna be setting oh. up. Braum just leave him. He's dead. K Trundle throwing up the pillar and backing out. Looks like uh, OHS has woken up from their game and is deciding to activate. Oh, Maverick uh, also getting a little bit chunked out, but it's not gonna be uh, dying to uh, dabs here. He does only have the Storm Razor, so it's not really enough to uh, completely shred through him. Oh my god, Trundle just smited the Raptor camp. Mental yeah. difference right there. Man, that just mental gap completely. Mental yeah. destroyed. I mean, Imagine it's not like he could have smited the red, right? He could have, he could have used it for the red, but you know, obviously, no, that's dude. a very <laughs> difficult situation to be in. <laughs> Listen, the mental edge of getting a, you, you start winning a team fight, right? And then they smite your raptor. It's like the mental edge. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just completely gap. Jungle gap. The only edge that I saw him on was the edge of that bush, honestly. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. You lose Baron, but you win a Scuttlecraft smite right after? Mental edge. It's complete, <laughs> complete domination of their brains. He's living in their heads rent-free now. Facts. Facts. Oh, so it looks and like it OHS will be making a nice little comeback here. Right, and it looks like the bot lane for Simon Sanchez is not in any position to go and contest for Dragon. Even yeah. Jungler is actually recalled, so they're like, uh, JB is not gonna be anywhere near Dragon Pit, so this is a free Drake for OHS. Yes, they, they have no semblance of macro. <laughs> they are now converging on the mid lane to play Nayram, which I respect and I enjoy watching. So. <laughs> this is the one, this <laughs> yeah. is what we've been waiting oh, for, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you are in so much danger, right? Oh my god, Yasuo with the sixth sense doesn't get caught out by the. That is the latest wind wall. He must be playing on 500 ping. Because that is the latest wind wall I have ever seen. Oh I my mean, goodness. But, but I, the six sense that they also had not to walk up there was insane. That was some LCS level, world <laughs> level uh, predictions. Like maybe they're all in that bush waiting for me to kill me. <laughs> he just didn't walk up. Honestly, like that, that wind wall was just as late as him upgrading it, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It took up to level 13 to finally get a point into his win wall. Uh, super weird macro play by Simon Sanchez. They were just, they just kind of, they were top, they lost Dragon, they were mid, then they're back to top. Like, I don't know if the bot lane knows what they're doing, but you know, if you don't know what you're doing, your opponent won't know what you're doing. So I respect the confusion they're causing on the battlefield right now. They're, they just want to be like, I see wave, I push wave. That's all I can see. The, you know, Yasuo did get a free turret in the bot lane, so... I don't know, man. It's, uh, it, is it working out for them half the time? <laughs> at least it's keeping them in the game, that's for sure. They're better at the team fights right now, so... You know, <laughs> I, I'm not sure what's going on, but Sanchez is looks, looking better in the team fight, so... Overall... Oh my god, Wait. are they gonna go in on this? Are they gonna go in on this? Yeah, yeah, I know. I was, no! I was waiting. I was waiting. I was like oh, saying like, wait, wait, wait. I just, I just want fights. Like, all we want as casters are people to fight. I, it might not be the best move all the time, but we love to see it, you know? We love to see the turbo griefing fights. It's our personal favorite. Right. Oh, is I it very... Uh, Sanchez has to be playing on like, the worst internet. Because the reaction times are uh, so delayed. It's a ping diff. I mean, uh, with with what we're dealing with, it is uh, public school. It is also Guam's internet. It is also just high schoolers in general. I I'm not True. really gonna do. I'm not gonna yeah, assume they, that they have the best internet. They have the best internet the best for setup. Microsoft Word. That's all they got. Yeah. True. True. Bare minimum. My my <laughs> school was definitely bare minimum. Holy! Look at Shoko. The jukes. The movement. They walk through a pink one. They just. They can't find him! Ankles broken, they are lost! <laughs> Where did he go? This Where is another go? one This is another one of those uh this is a similar thing from last week's game against Aimless Uprising. Definitely everybody in this game is running around aimlessly. Yeah. 
That was hilarious. The, the Shen just literally Metal Gear. Dick, take the ward! Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the Shen oh, was legit no. like Metal Gear soliding around the map. This, that was hilarious. Oh my god. It looks like Mark wants to engage on Juju, but is not going to be able to do so. Uh, honestly, Mark looking really clean on the on the Yasuo right now, and I think that may be their hope to winning this game. So this is gonna be. I'm just wait. I'm really waiting for a fight to happen. Everybody's just power farming, and not knowing what to do. Now they're thinking about doing Baron at 25 minutes. Good job because Dragon is down. <laughs> the movement on the map is absolutely insane. The, the right now the jungler is wait, in the bot wait. lane when Baron wait. is up. Did tell oh one v five teleport mark? I, they, oh wait, just actually backs away from this because Trundle split pushing bot. Yo, <laughs> everyone's decision why. making right now is whack as hell. Like, what are you guys doing? Uh, okay. What is happening on the map? You want to know? Uh, the thing is, right? Look at if you look at that side of the map, they actually did not have any vision. So maybe they were afraid of where Simon Sanchez was, but this at this point, dude, they are playing incredibly safe. Like you saw, you saw Trundle at bot with Yasuo. Yasuo just randomly teleports to the top thing. I, it's just so insane. I, I love it. It's just literal guerrilla warfare. They're in my head. I'm not even in the game. <laughs> They're in my head. And living rent free. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm getting mental gapped right now. It's insane. I don't know how to play against this. <laughs> uh, I believe dragon's coming up. I forgot I, what button my dragon was. This is it. This is the one, this is the moment we've wait, been waiting for, guys. We've been waiting for a fight to happen at dragon, and this is probably where it's gonna go down. Okay, so dragon is available. Silas has TP up. He's inside the base. Uh, looks like Sanchez is taking Raptors. Uh, uh, the only thing though is that they have no vision of what's going on at Drake Pit. Yeah, they're gonna be on their way. Rom needs to put a Rom down. Okay. Rom, you have three wards, buddy. Uh, uh, about four minutes late on that ward there. <laughs> but... uh... yeah, good, good setup there by OHS. Just pointing out the good things that happened. They they had yeah. all the ward control down for Dragon. They were ready to yeah. go for that objective, so. Well yeah, played there by OHS. Enough, enough of the flaming, enough of the flaming. Yeah. We, we, we're gonna move on from that. We're better than that, yeah. right? We're, we're gonna better. go, we're gonna look at what's the positive, guys. We're gonna look at the positive. And it looks like Juju gonna be able to catch out Mazen, no? No. No. Mavzen, sorry, Mavzen. Ma yeah, Mavzen with the protobel and the Absend. Easy, easy escape tools, but they will get the Scuttle Crab for their troubles. Honestly, I'm just I'm, I'm really waiting for uh, the J4 Cataclysm to just go down. I feel like a si I feel like Mavzen was really caught out there. He could have bur uh, uh, burnt a flash because he did use the uh, I believe what you said was the Abscon and Abduct already. So he did not have any uh, way of getting out of it. So it's gonna it would have been something to see, but once again we're dealing with safety. Up, yeah. So he could have ran away with Flash. I I'm sure, like, the way these guys are playing, they're gonna just run away from everything, if possible. True. But like I said, you know, Flash is like a, you know, at least they get rid of it, right? So that they can actually force a fight if they wanted to, <laughs> I'd like to say. <laughs> ah. But anyways, going back into the game. Uh, like we said, everybody is gonna be farming. I I think they're gonna be they're just gonna be power farming until level 18, or they're gonna be power farming until Dragon is gonna be coming up. And it is Infernal Soul for Team OHS. You know what the crazy so thing this... is, uh, Arc Pulse, is that this game is like legitimately longer than the first game, which they intentionally made long. Right. It's wild. <laughs> Thirty minutes in. And 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 you know this is this is what um like uh, I like to say also comes into with the rank disparity as well. You know if you notice on the map right everybody's kind of just wander wandering like aimlessly around farming up what they can, seeing if they could find people. And you know this is just this the the show of like what is your game plan? 
right? What are you trying to accomplish here? At this point, whenever there's an objective up, that's what the one thing that all teams should be eyeballing on. But I think a lot of them are just really hesitant to do anything at this point. Yeah, I don't know. It, it seems a little, a little weird. Like neither team wants to take the initiative and to make, a, to make a play. Right. Oh, never mind. Maybe Mark. Wait. Actually, gets the win wall, but he gets stunned. See, this is another. This is like what I said. A lot of the things are just not happening on the map right now. Uh. They, if they have vision, right, I feel like the moment that OHS has that vision and knowledge of where everybody else is on the map, they would engage because Mavzen has been alone in the mid lane for uh, the past 5 to 10 minutes, yep. has been caught out a, a good amount of time, but has been able to escape because OHS is not committed. Yeah, that's the thing. Definitely. I mean, it's not you not taking utilization of the, the type of vision vision that they do have on the map. Oh, we now we finally do. We finally get an engage. There's a cataclysm it's going down. Uh, Brahm is also caught out and he's going to be taunted and he's going to die to the to all of the auto attacks from team OHS. Finally, we have something going go. on in the map, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely change this into an effective violent turret going down. Oh, and it looks like Juju's gonna be going in more. May then is actually gonna get out. Tenoso not gonna be able to close it out because he already used. Actually, he still has his ultimate available. Right. It looks like we're gonna go for the Baron play. Um, it is actually the best play because uh, bot their uh, Simon Sanchez's bot lane is down. Uh, four members over there. Uh, Shioko does have TP. He can TP to any ward that is surrounding the, the Baron area. And none, nobody from uh, Team Simon Sanchez is going to be responding to that. So that is a Baron. Finally, like that, and that all came from that nice engagement in the in the middle of the map. They won a small team fight. Changed it into a couple objectives there. So that's that's great. Yeah, and and that's the that's like the how how things happen in a late game, right? We once we see uh, once somebody makes a mistake, and that's what I believe they were just tripping up on. Okay, the blast cone thing was weird, but <laughs> uh, honestly, wait, we have a pause. Oh, pause. Five hundred. Yeah, up. they were lagging. Okay, so that explains a lot. Right, it does explain a lot. So. We're, we're we're going under a tunnel right now, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, Trundle is uh, hitting hitting that spike. Not the not the power spike that you wanted, but the 500 the ping spike. spike. Yeah. This is definitely certainly not the power spike that they were looking for. But why does he also have Edge of Night and Chain though? How long was I gone? Oh, uh, uh, you just missed a uh, you, you missed, missed like fight. a engage in a yeah you missed a small team fight in the mid mid lane. So, just to recap for you, they they engaged on Brom and Tristana of all people, and uh, it was five, it was all of OHS engaging. So, they they were easily able to clean it up. Wait, who won the team fight? OHS? Yeah, because it was only just Tristana Brom. It was a pick. It was actually a pick. Yeah, they took. Okay. They won that team fight. Took a middle turret, then took a Baron. So. Yep. They took tier okay. two, and then they took Baron. So now they have Baron right now. Um. And it looks like they're just going to be trying... Simon Satch is going to be trying to contest for Soul. Yeah, we're actually... they're going to... This is Soul already yeah. for uh, OHS, so... Simon Satch just needs to be there. It looks like Trundle is hanging out in the jungle, doing his wolves right now while Dragon is up, which is a turbo grief! Yeah, this is a, a very interesting... Uh, yeah, here we go. I, I think that with, with Simon Sanchez for their jungler, they just... Oh, actually, their team, their entire oh, team just needs to learn. We need the, right? the game screen back up on uh, Laddie. Yeah. As the unpause goes down. And here we go again. Dragon right. set up. Okay, this time Sanchez is sort of around the dragon. And it looks right. like Trundle is trying to back while Dragon is up. Uh, okay. You're actually a griefer if you finish that back. Wait. Okay, they're not going to back. Okay, please okay, don't this is this is something that we've seen also last week. Again, Aimless Uprising, where both of them kind of standing around, standing around a dragon pit, 
waiting for somebody to be like, oh, here I am, I'm out here, but nothing, nothing's gonna be happening, but they're actually gonna be starting it up. Yeah, OHS had that first they, move they had on Dragon. Yeah. No, OHS had first move on Dragon. They should've definitely just taken it, but... Oh, and it looks like... What uh, the he... hell was that? Uh, looks like he's gonna be caught out. That's, that's not getting caught out. That is flashing into the pit, ulting, and literally none of your teammates are there. Yeah. What are you doing? What went through his mind? I want to interview CS. I honestly don't know. He he wanted to steal the Drake. I commend Ooh. him, honestly, but it was turbo instinct. <laughs> Rom's ultimate does 300 damage. Listen, all right? Listen, 300 damage. Juju Smite does 850 damage. He's level 15 with 33 minutes in the game. Why are we not playing for Dragon, guys? Sanchez, I... dude. Oh, he just woke up. Now you guys are screwed. <laughs> Do something. <laughs> what happened to the, the Yasuo plays? Go right. 1v9 them. Sanchez sharks them down. Oh, oh he just... LHS definitely had a slow start. These are the bulldogs that have woken up from their slumber. It is now 11.35 a.m. and they are now wide awake. So... <laughs> this is gonna be uh, quite interesting. They still have a little bit of time on the Baron buff before it runs out. And then uh, they, it looks like they're just gonna get a uh, top tier 1 turret and also possibly Top or bot tier two turret bot. Oh, looks like there's gonna be a fight. Donia from Mad Ben gonna be going down, and also the Rakan ultimate gonna go down, taunting everybody. OHS cleaning it up. Mark, what are you doing out there? It's it's, it's no, Mark all is over. behind them. No, 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 no. Mark's proxying the wave. Never mind, he stopped proxying the wave. Yeah, there's not that much of a wave to proxy anymore because look at look at the minions. Look at all the caster minions that are available. It looks like OHS at OHS 35 just... minutes is going to be ending. Unless we uh, see the Yasuo one too tonight. long. Okay, he's missed literally every... Every Q? <laughs> Q <Up. laughs> Alright, go. Oh, Do it. And there oh, it is, the missed Q is gonna be going down. Uh, one thing that I would have commended him on is if he just E'd and Q'd into them to ultimate. Get the three-man knockup, but it's fine. Looks like it's gonna be going to OHS, securing the victory for this week. <laughs> Indeed. Very methodically played that by OHS. They played it really slow, made sure they made no mistakes, and uh, Sanchez, you guys, if you need a coach, you know, I'm willing to help you guys out. You can go ahead and contact me on uh, Discord or add me on League, Administrator. You guys need help and you're my alma mater, so I will help you for free. <laughs> there you go. Game. That, that game was an there. interesting game. They started off pretty strong. Like, you know, it was pretty even for most of the first 25 minutes of that match though and then kind of just yeah, weird macro I had plays. faith super yeah. weird macro plays I had faith and uh unfortunately it did not go the way you know I wanted it to go but it was a good match nonetheless OHS played very safe very conservatively were able to pick up kills where they could find them got all the objectives on the map when they could and they just out you know team difference they just got outplayed so respect to OHS as they take the W this yeah. time around, bringing them to a 1-1. And up next, we got UOG versus the FD Flakers. That's going to be happening on the UOG channel. So um, they should be going live soon. I'm going to go ahead and send a raid there, even if they're offline. But you guys should expect them on in just the next few minutes. Uh, we're going to get uh, Arcos and Admin over there. But once again, thank you to our sponsors. Um, Guam Windward Memorial. Uh, heavy hitters, Monster Energy, as well as Good Wood and Coffee Sweat. Without them, a lot of this couldn't be possible. Actually, definitely check out Heavy Hitters this weekend, uh, where you can get their awesome Taro Burger. So definitely check them out. And any last words, guys, before we send it over to UOG? Oh, thank you everyone for coming out, watching the games, and uh, catch us on the UOG channel, uh, UOG Triton Esports, and uh, we'll see you there. I'm sure everyone will follow. Yes, be sure to check us out there as we do our final game of this uh, of this week. So it'll be hopefully it'll be really exciting to see, for sure. Catch you guys there. <laughs> Peace. Bye guys.